Okay, Gene, you like to sleep, don't you? Sure, doesn't everyone? Well, not really. I mean, I sometimes feel pretty resentful of sleep. Think about it. If I didn't need to sleep, I could get so much more done. And what would you do with all that extra time? I guess what I'd really do is watch a ton more TV, but I could also write more and read more and play with my dog more. Your dog would probably want to sleep, Steve. I know. I mean, that's part of the problem. Well, tell me this. If you resent sleep so much, why do you do it? That's the thing about sleep. It actually allows me to enjoy all those things I just said I could do more of if I didn't need to sleep. The bottom line, we humans need our sleep. And that leads us to some interesting questions about kids and sleep. Given that kids are all about getting things done and that kids also need even more sleep than adults, how much does a lack of sleep affect them? That is a complicated question. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is enough sleep for, say, the average teen? Well, according to most researchers, teens need between 8 to 10 hours at night, and that most folks say about 9 hours. But most kids, they get less than 7 hours a night. That's a problem. Well, it's not hard to see why. We're asking teens to give up watching TV or Snapchatting with their friends during the only time they have left in the day, and that's usually 10 or 11 at night. Then they get up at 6 in the morning for school to get 9 hours at night. Good luck with that. Exactly. The current world doesn't really allow kids to get enough sleep without our help. But think about it, not a single organism on this planet that has a brain has evolved to go without sleep. This is why folks like you and me have to advocate for kids getting enough sleep. All sorts of bad things can happen if kids get too sleep deprived. For example, they can't focus at school without enough sleep. And tired kids definitely drive worse. And generally, they just don't function as well. Not getting enough sleep can even lead to problems like depression and anxiety and can make us more vulnerable to almost every illness. So what are some tricks we can do to get our kids to sleep more? Well, we can start by unplugging in the bedroom. It's hard these days given all the distractions available on tablets and computers and phones, but even though many kids will find a way to sneak some kind of electronics in the room at night, if we model best practices for them in the evening, they'll be less likely to stay up late because they're staring at a screen. Wait, do you mean I shouldn't watch my laptop in bed if my kids can see me? Steve, you shouldn't watch your laptop in bed even if your kids can't see you. I know, I know. So what else can't I do? Well, don't have too much caffeine, energy drinks, some sodas, coffee, tea, even chocolate. All these have caffeine and they can interfere with the sound sleep. Also, people sleep better if they go to bed around the same time and get up around the same time every day. Now, we know that's a tall order with children of all ages, so maybe it's not a hard, fast rule, but it should be an important goal. On that note, let's talk about sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene involves all the things we mentioned. No electronics in bed, less caffeine, going to sleep and waking up around the same time each day, but also developing a consistent evening routine especially building in time to wind down. Don't expect your kid to go straight to sleep at the end of an after-school rehearsal or an evening sports event. Lots of kids are booked every single minute, from morning until night, and, and that's problematic since everyone needs some time to relax before dozing off. Teens need some time just to think about and make sense of everything that happened during the day. And younger kids need the time to think about what they learned during the day and to mentally prepare for the next day. Finally, you want to make sure that there aren't medical factors that keep a child awake. For example, stomach aches can lead to poor sleep, and so can sleep apnea. Sleep apnea? You mean like snoring? Yep. In fact, sleep apnea can also be the cause of symptoms of ADHD, and is being diagnosed more often in children. If your child snores, it's a good idea to talk to your pediatrician about an overnight sleep study. Anything else we should talk about? Well, there's the psychiatric stuff. Yeah, like depression, anxiety, trauma, these things can all make sleep more difficult. And even kids without anxiety disorders can get too anxious to sleep. As a matter of fact, bullying, either online or in person, can make it awfully hard to fall asleep. So you got to ask. If you notice your child isn't sleeping, ask them what's getting in the way. Yep, and if you're concerned about your child not getting enough sleep, talk to your doctor. You don't want to let this slide. Sleep is too important. There are behavioral interventions and medications that can help. So enjoy your good night's rest. But before you do that, help your child to enjoy it too. He's Steve Schlossman. And he's Gene Bresson. And we're the MGH Clay Center and hope that our conversation will help you have yours.